In other words, in this sacred month, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala manifests more of His generosity and mercy than He does otherwise. And this is from the divine will and the divine wisdom, the surpassing divine wisdom that informs everything in the world that certain times, certain places, certain circumstances are imbued with more light, with more mercy, with more opportunity for the believer to return to his Lord, to reorient oneself to the divine pleasure. And time is an interesting thing in and of itself. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swears by time, وَالْعَصِرْ إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَفِي خُسْرِ إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِنُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ وَالتَّوَاصُوا بِالْحَقِّ وَالتَّوَاصُوا بِالصَّبْرِ I swear by time that human beings are naturally in and of themselves in a great state of loss, except those that orientation, that have certitude in the divine, firm faith, and work deeds of righteousness, and enjoin one another to truth, and enjoin one another to patience. And of course, the principle of enjoining one another is predicated on knowledge. One of the travesties of our time is that everyone wants to weigh in. And the, the nature of our media with which we communicate allows for everyone to chime in. Social media creates it, it enables everyone to, to, to give their opinion. And particularly in our community, the sunnah prescribes a type of hierarchy. The people of knowledge are above. In this world, they are positioned above the people of ignorance. The people of piety are positioned. Above. Allah Ta'ala has granted certain people hierarchy. And that's clear in the sunnah. But we're in an age of leveling. Everyone is leveled to the same playing field. And so those in our community that sacrifice the most and gave everything to learn this tradition and exerted themselves more than others to learn wisdom in general are just leveled with everyone else. And then they are the object of censorship and blame and rebuke for issues that at worst are great. Ijtihadi issues, ijtihadi issues, which our times call for ijtihad and we have to allow each other to make mistakes. But in any case, this is a, this is a travesty of our community. It's, it's one of the symptoms of the disease of ignorance. And as a community, we have to be careful because if we treat our elders, elders in knowledge and wisdom, if we treat them, if we level them and then treat them in a way of disrespect, that's in our tradition called kufran and ni'mah. It's ingratitude to Allah for the blessing of such people. And the punishment in this life for ingratitude of a blessing is Allah Ta'ala takes those blessings away. Just recently, a dear colleague of mine and a teacher of mine, for, albeit for a short period, Mufti Umar Ismail in Austin, rahimahullah, just passed away at the age of 45. Allah have mercy on him. And it, it's still a shock, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the hadith at the end of time, that Allah ta'ala will lift knowledge. And it's not by taking it out of the breasts of human beings, the chests of human beings, but rather it's by the death of our scholars. And when that happens, the people will take juhal, ignorant people, as their ru'asa, as their leaders, as their guides. And the fact that people are willing to take individuals as leaders means that they have a certain amount of charisma, they have a certain amount of currency, they're able to articulate themselves in a way that gives the impression of knowledge and wisdom, although they, have, they, they won't have any knowledge of wisdom and wisdom. The Prophet said they're juhal, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in the hadith sharif. And then what did he say, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? فَضَلُّوا وَأَضَلُّوا So those leaders will be misguided and then they'll misguide the community. 
And what happens when we tear apart? We're in an age of deconstruction. Postmodernism is all about deconstruction. If we deconstruct our hierarchies of knowledge and wisdom of how to take this tradition, of how to learn this tradition, what's going to happen in the next generation, in the next two generations? In, in, in generations that all they know is social media. And the people of knowledge and wisdom will recede even more and more. They, will, they, will, they won't want a part of the, sh the charade, the, f the facade. The facade in English, the facade in Arabic. But in any case, Allah's mercy is ever present. And we have to remind ourselves of the means by which we learn our religion. It is through the heirs of the Prophet And there are mechanisms for nasiha. We're not denying that, but not everyone can give it. Those eligible for nasiha are the ones that give the nasiha. And as a community, we need to reinstate these principles if we want to have sustainable communities and that not lose the mechanisms to pass on knowledge to our children and grandchildren. But Muharram is a beautiful reminder of the mercy of Allah being ever present. And my mercy encompasses every single thing, even the situations in our lives that, that cause us to weep, Allah's mercy is still there. And Muharram is a time of deliverance. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Hadith Sharif, authentic Hadith, that the Prophet arrived in Medina, found the Jews fasting on Ashura, the 10th of Muharram, which is this coming Tuesday. And he said, why are you fasting it? They said, this is the day that Allah delivered Musa and the Bani Israel from Fir'aun and drowned Aghraqa Ali Fir'aun, drowned the folk, the followers of Pharaoh. And so Musa fasted, fasted this day out of shukr, shukran illah, out of gratitude. And the Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we have more right to this, O Kamaqal Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this became a sunnah. And so it's a sunnah to fast on Ashura as an expression of gratitude. And in the year before the best of creation passed away, peace and blessings be upon him, he stated that his intention was to add to it another day. And so it's recommended for those that are able to, the able-bodied, to fast on the 9th and 10th, this coming Monday, Tuesday, or the 10th and 11th, Tuesday, Wednesday. And that Muharram is a day that the voluntary fast is most beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's a month, excuse me, in which the voluntary and all good deeds Ibn Rajab relates in the Lata'if al Ma'arif that in this month, Muhar in, on, the, on the day of Ashura, fasting and charity, in his, according to this author of the great companion, Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al As, anhumah, he said that the fasting on Ashura is like fasting an entire year, and that giving charity on Ashura is like giving charity for an entire year. And so, whatever avenues of good we're able to do, we should embrace those in this month in general, and in particular on the day of Ashura, as what? As a reflection of gratitude to Allah, shukranillah, so we can hold on to these blessings. And as a way of reorienting ourselves to Allah so that we can receive more of His sublime mercy and generosity. These, this is Shahrullah, the month of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that of the most salient principles in, the, in, in terms of turning back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in other words, what should inform whatever good deeds we're able to do on the Ashura or in general in Muharram, what should inform internally all of that is Tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to turn back to Him. We are, all of us, each of us is in dire need of Tawbah. And this is based on the verse of the Qur'an, the text of the Qur'an itself, Allah ta'ala has revealed, وَتُوبُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا أَيُّهَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ And return back to Allah, return back to the Divine in repentance, O oh believers, jami'an, without exception, without exception, so that happily you might flourish. لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ And in our tafsir tradition, when Allah Ta'ala says, لَعَلَّ It's going to happen. And so the flourishing of the human being is predicated on Tawbah. This is a time of Tawbah. This is a month of Tawbah. Ashura is a day of Tawbah. In the Hadith of Tirmidhi, the Prophet, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Prophet informed us وسلم, that Allah ta'ala on the day of Ashura forgave an entire community, an entire ummah on that day. As an ummah, we need to make Tawbah. And individually, we need to make Tawbah. But that's a day that Allah forgave an entire ummah and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala relents to people with repentance on that day. Repentance is the 
most sacred gift that we have to turn back to Allah. When a, when a person becomes Muslim, that's the most important repentance in the world. And every believer, jami'an ayyuhal mu'minun, every believer must be in a constant state of tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in hadith Muslim, innahu la yughanu ala qalbi wa inni la astaghfiru allaha fil yawm mi'ata marra, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Verily, there is a haziness that dawns over my heart. Ghayn. And verily, I seek the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 100 times a day. That's the best of creation, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. A man who never committed an act of disobedience, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. A man who never did anything makru, displeasing, dislike to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, unless in the context of teaching the ummah that it's not haram, for which reason he was rewarded for it, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. A, person who, a man who never committed a major or minor sin before or after his blessed prophethood. Prophethood, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. A man who is divinely protected from doing anything displeasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is why the ghayn, this haziness over his blessed heart, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, was not a ghayn of distraction from Allah, but as our scholars teach us, it was a ghayn, a haziness of deep in, deeper remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Something that we can't comprehend. And because the ummah would not be able to comprehend the intensity of the illumination of that haziness over the blessed heart of the Prophet ﷺ, he sought forgiveness from Allah because istighfar comes from the root, for, root, root word, ghafara, which is satar, veiling. Because he sought to be veiled such that the ummah could still benefit from him, recognizing his role of nubuwa ﷺ, rather than his private walaya with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the light of which would blind us the spiritual light of which would blind us. So he sought forgiveness. But our forgiveness is very different. We need to seek forgiveness for the darknesses. We need to seek forgiveness for not paying attention to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We need to seek forgiveness for all the slips and the faults and the mistakes that we need to have introspection for. And connecting it, connecting it back to this travesty of our times where the, the, the righteous scholars are leveled with everyone else and people who have no knowledge are ready to snap judgment at them and write long rants online about them and then do hour-long podcasts about them, that where is, their, where is the introspection? How many faults do we have? How many burdens do we have, each of us, on our own shoulders to busy us and preoccupy us from prejudging, prejudice, circumstances that we don't understand? It's, it's, it's an absurdity. It's actually laughable. It's actually laughable. It's something to weep for, something to weep over, and something to laugh at at the same time. This is the irony of the human being, of the human condition. If a person is overwhelmed with their sense of their own shortcomings and faults, they don't have the time or energy to get online and give their little rants. Subhanallah. It's like the Salaf used to write down their own sins. That was their media post between them and the angels between them and their Lord. They used to write down their sins and make tawbah for each one. And the, 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 the awliya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, why are they awliya? Why, why are they people that Allah ta'ala defends? Whoever shows animosity to a saint of mine, I declare war against them. In the hadith Qudsi, Allah ta'ala says, defending his awliya. That whoever has right taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah gives them a way out and provides from the, for them from whence they would never have realized. Why? Because they are overwhelmed with their sense. Their introspection is real and genuine and authentic. They're called the Siddiqeen, the people of authenticity. The people who are most genuine and authentic for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Their tawbah is real. They turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with with a real heart, living hearts, لَعَلَكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ Flourishing hearts that don't have the time for nonsense. Abu Hassan al-Shadri rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, أَحْسَنُ husun, The best fortress you could ever have. The best protection you could ever have. مَا, أخبر, ما أَخْبَرَكَ بِهِ مِنَ الْإِسْتِغْفَارِ Is what he, capital H, has informed you of. Of personal repentance and asking Allah for forgiveness, personally. وَحَقِيقَتُهُ أَنَّا يَكُونَ لِغَيْرِ اللَّهِ قَرَارٍ And the reality of istighfar is that the person has no repose, 
no true security and comfort except in the presence of Allah. And that's a tall order. We all have a lot of work to do. Much more work than would allow us to engage in folly of no benefit, let alone harm, out of pure ignorance. And then he cites the verse, see that Abul Hassan cites the verse of the Qur'an, وَمَا كَانُ اللَّهُ لِيُعَذِّبَهُمْ What's his proof? Kitab and Sunnah. Kitab and Sunnah. All of our righteous Imams were following the way ascribed to the Salaf before any modernist movement. Kitab and Sunnah. وَمَا كَانُ اللَّهُ لِيُعَذِّبَهُمْ وَهُمْ يَسْتَغْفِرُونَ What's his proof that istighfar is the best fortress in the world? وَمَا كَانُ اللَّهُ لِيُعَذِّبَهُمْ وَهُمْ يَسْتَغْفِرُونَ and Allah was not going to punish them while they were seeking forgiveness. And Allah was not going to punish them while they were seeking forgiveness. How can the community hope for this protection, this sacred sublime protection revealed in the book of Allah, if they're too preoccupied with the faults of not just other people, but the best of their community? And that distracts them from their own introspection. And then it just becomes lip service. I recently heard, some, I shouldn't have listened to it, where the person just, it was like a disclaimer, you know, we should be concerned with our own faults first. But anyways, let's get down to it. And the people of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's not, they don't have that, like a disclaimer. No, if they're gonna do an hour long rant, it's gonna be about their own, their own state with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then dua, and then just making dua. If there's something vague about, people in our community, leaders, scholars in our community that we don't understand, then pray for them. Put that effort in prayer, not in folly and foolishness. We ask Allah SWT to guide us. We ask Allah SWT to make us people who embrace the mercy of Muharram, of Ashura. We ask Allah Taala to figure, forgive us of our shortcomings and our faults and our sins. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum fastaghfirullah inna allaha ghafur rahim. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, wa salilahum ala Sayyidil Muhammad al Nabi al Ummi, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa salim tislim al Kathira. This is a time of gratitude, this is a time of hope, this is a time of optimism. Ashura and Muharram are profound reminders of who is in charge. One of the most important things to go back to in our istighfar, in our toba, is the state of the heart in recognizing reality. Who is in charge? There will be bitter times in this world. There will be difficulties in this, in this world. There will be suffering in this world. There is evil and oppression in this world. But none of that negates reality that Allah Ta'ala is the only one in charge. Allah Ta'ala is never absent from His creation. Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala is never non-aware, unaware of His creation. Allah Ta'ala is never not paying attention to His creation. Ta'ala Allah, Ta'ala Allah. Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala is the eternal. Qayyum as samawati wal ard the maintainer, the self-sufficient maintainer of every single particular circumstance, movement and stillness in the entire cosmos, in the heavens and earth. Nothing happens except it's from the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Kulla yawm huwa fi sha'n. Even the most difficult ayyam, kulla yawm huwa fi sha'n. In every day, in every moment, Allah ta'ala is directly engaged in an affair. The affairs of our lives, the affairs of our communities, the affairs, the circumstances, of people in power and people without power, people who oppress and people who are oppressed. None of that is outside of the scope of the Mashia, the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the omnipotent power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wahu ala kulli shay'in qadir, wahu bi kulli shay'in alim. Allah ta'ala knows all of it, Allah ta'ala has willed all of it, Allah ta'ala creates all of it. Qulillahu khaliqu kulli shay'in, wahu al wahidul qahar. Say, Allah ta'ala, Allah is the creator of every single thing and He is the one, the all dominant. And He remains all dominant even when people disobey Him, even when oppressors oppress the disenfranchised. Allah Ta'ala is still Al-Qahar, Azza wa Jal. Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala, إِلَى الْمَشِيئَةِ يَسْتَنِدُ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ كُلُّ شَيْءٍ Ibn Ta'ala says to the Divine Will, does every single thing rely on? وَلَا تَسْتَنِدُ هِيَ إِلَى شَيْءٍ And the Mashi'ah, the will of Allah relies on nothing. He Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala is al haq أَسْتَقُوا كَلِمَةٍ قَالَهَا لَبِيدْ أَسْتَقُوا كَلِمَةٍ قَالَهَا شَاعِرْ كَلِمَةُ لَبِيدْ أَلَا كُلُّ شَيْءٍ مَا خَلَ اللَّهَ بَاطِلُ 
The Prophet said in Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Sahih Bukhari, the most truthful statement a poet ever uttered was the statement of Labid, verily everything besides Allah is batil, fake, counterfeit, unreal. Why? Because who is the only real? Al-Haq, Azza wa Jal, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Al-Qayyum, Al-Samad, Al-Ghani, Jalla Thana'uhu. And if we can't understand it, we will on the Day of Judgment. It's as simple as that. The Akhirah, that's the time of leveling. That's the time where everything is made even. Not leveling, but the time where every, every debt is paid off. Yawm al-Deen min al-Dayn. Dayn, related to Deen. It's the day of the, the, where the debts fall due. No one gets away with anything. On the Qiyamah, on the day of judg judgment, resurrection, Allah Ta'ala rectifies everything. Even the animal, who are, they, they're not even accountable. The one that harmed the, the other animal, they get to harm them back and then they're... That's the Qiyamah. So the context of everything, the good and the evil, the sweet and the bitter, Yawm Al Qiyamah. And so Shahrullah is a reminder of who? Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And this is the way our hearts flourish. As the Prophet said, The example of the one that makes remembrance of Allah compared to the one that forgets Allah is like the example of the living versus the dead. So if we don't make remembrance of Allah and then we get into existential crises trying to understand the world, we're like corpses, spiritual corpses. We have to allow life to enter the heart. Through what? Through remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the heart, in the mind. And then that recognition of the divine, that knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the elixir, it, 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 it is the healing for the soul and it allows us to see things as they are. اللهم أرنا الحق حقا ورزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا ورزقنا اجتنابه اللهم أرنا الأشياء كما هي اللهم إنا نسرك التوفيق والإخلاص ودوام النعمة وحسن الختام اللهم فرج عنا وعن المسلمين في كل مكان اللهم فرج عنا وعن المسلمين في كل مكان اللهم فرج عنا وعن المسلمين في كل مكان اللهم إنا نسرك تمام العافية اللهم إنا نسرك دوام العافية اللهم إنا نسرك الشكر للعافية اللهم إنا نسرك الغنى عن الناس إن الله وملائكته يسلم على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم الحمد لله رب العالمين وأقيم الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر شهد أن لا إله إلا